The situation is pretty taxing for everyone, so I've got... Excuse me, you wanna buy plot of land? You have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one, two, three, intro. Hi everyone, this is Krisha from Third World Book Nerd. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, this is where we talk about books, reading, and... What was the last part? Gana ko off cam ang mic pero di siya off cam. Today we're gonna talk about some lighthearted reads that can hopefully help you get through this quarantine period. So stay tuned. Also, if you're wondering if I shoot in my mom's backyard all the time, I don't. This is kind of a one-off thing. It's very hot inside, so we're out here getting some fresh air and sunlight because at the end of the day, we're all just plants with complex feelings. So it's been a month since the quarantine started here in our area and the situation's pretty taxing for everyone, especially to our friends who are living alone without families. So a lot of them ask me, Krish, do you have any book recommendations that are lighthearted that can, I don't know, help me get my mind off the things that are happening right now? And I'm like, okay, sure, let me make a video about it. So that's what we're here for. So I hope that the following reads can give you a little bit of escape from real life, even just for a bit. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's just get into the video right now. First book on our list is Stargirl by Jerry Spinelli. Stargirl is one of my favorite young adult novels to date. Um, it's a very short read. If you're really into it, you can probably finish it in just a day. It's a coming of age tale about Leo and this girl. Stargirl Caraway, who comes to their school, kind of shakes things up. It's a coming of age tale about a lot of things actually, but mostly about individuality and really standing up for what you believe in. The protagonist, um, Leo, is kind of a normal kid and then he meets Stargirl. Um, and they have these adventures together and they realize a lot of things along the way. Stargirl's kind of absurd, kind of weird, kind of quirky. She's kind of um, a milder version of the manic pixie dream girl, or a younger version of it. But her character still works to the story. I really love it. If you're in for a lighthearted growing up situation, I do recommend Stargirl by Jerry Spinelli. Oh, hi, mom. Mm. Next book on our list is House Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. Um, is it such a cliche thing to say that I love this book more than the movie? The Hayao Miyazaki classic is a classic. It's a good. It's a good movie. I love it. How's cute? But House Moving Castle, the book is. I find it just way better than the movie. There, I said it. I think they kind of altered the story somewhat center on war, sa movie, but this one is just pure kind of, it's fluff. I love it so much. If you need a pick me up from, um, I don't know, a bad day or a bad situation, some kind of like that, I highly recommend Howl's Moving Castle. So, how is it different from the movie? Um, Sophie, in this universe, the eldest children in the family are cursed to have a great misfortune if and when they leave home. So Sophie, being the eldest one in the family, she can't leave home unless she wants to be, you know, unlucky her whole life. But then she encounters this evil witch who turns her into an old lady. And she doesn't have a choice but to seek out this nefarious, um, wizard howl who lives in a moving castle in the countryside so i like the book more because the plot makes more sense um, it ties neatly together and there are so many details that you find along the way that tie up really nicely towards the end i love it i think diana Wynne jones she's a genius in world building i love her so much it's so silly and the characters are also slightly different um, from the movie, book Sophie is infinitely snarkier than movie Sophie, and... Hi, I'm 
Fadiha. I love her in the book because she's so kind of feistier. And how he's also not this kind, cute dude that you see in the in the movie too. He's more self-centered. He's kind of an idiot. He's so vain. I love him. But we see character development along the way, and that's what's important. Their dynamic is so funny. I think it's funnier in the book because in the movie they're kind of like lovey dovey, cute cute, truva truva. But in the in the book, they're it's more of a enemies to lover situation so that's why i love it if you want something whimsical magical cute funny super light-hearted i do recommend house moving castle by diana win jones we're rolling actually thanks mom the third book in our list is one of my personal favorites. Whenever people ask me to recommend them books, whether it's lighthearted or not, I recommend them The Bride Test by Helen Huang. The Bride Test by Helen Huang is her second book. Um, it is kind of a companion novel to her first book, The Kiss Quotient, but you can read this one as a standalone. The Bride Test. It's funny, it's light, it's killing. There's a sprinkling of heartbreak going on somewhere in the middle, in the end. But altogether, it's a really funny, nice love story. You've got the romance, you've got the... It's also kind of an enemies to lovers situation. And it's got a lot of elements to it. But what I love the most about this book is that it represents two very important groups. One, it represents people with autism. Number two, it represents Southeast Asian immigrants. Put them together, you've got one touching, beautiful, funny, lighthearted tale that you can read over, over, and over again. What's the story, Morning Glory? Um, it revolves around Kai. Kai's mom is obsessed on getting Kai to marry because he's of marriageable age now. And on another hand, we have Esme who wants to have a green card and a better future for her family. She's from Vietnam. It's very killing, but I, I love that there's a good amount of angst in it too. Kai has autism, so that's one thing thrown in the mix that they have to deal with as well. So the book really takes you on a journey. It's fun, it's lighthearted, but it also has some meat to it. So this is my third recommendation, and I hope you guys will love it. Hi, me. What's that? Don't give a thumb book. Still have a book. Our fourth recommendation is. <laughs> Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto. Like the bride test, I also recommend Kitchen to everyone I encounter. Like if they ask me, Krish, what's your all-time favorite book? I say, no contest. It's Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto. This is a very short read. Like, can you see it? Super thin. And I love it so much because well, it's not as lighthearted as the other books that I have recommended in this video so far. It does deal with things like death and grieving and other kinds of complex things. But the way the story is told is very simple, very poignant, very... I don't know how to describe it. You'll have to read it for yourself. The writing style is something that you can rarely see these days. I don't know, there's just something about this book that makes me wax nostalgic. The words are so simple, but it paints a very clear picture in your mind and really hits you with pure emotion. I really think that this book is, I don't know, it's a very unique book. And it's very ahead of its time. And it's unapologetic about its lightness. I love it so much. And I hope you will too. Okay, I'm begging my... My baga. My baga. Cool sibling check. Get out of my face. Another lighthearted book that I can recommend you guys is I Capture the Castle by Dottie Smith. 
Um, I capture the castle. I, I like to describe I capture the castle as to all the boys I loved before, but set in the early 1900s situation. It tells of her adventures while growing up in the English countryside together with her family, her dad, a writer, her stepmother, this servant boy that they have, this dog, and the people who come visit them. They really got the voice of a, a teenager growing up during those times. The humor is so sharp as well. It's mostly a slice of life kind of thing and it's very light it's <laughs> the book itself is very cinematic and you kind of feel everything from the narrator's point of view because she's an aspiring writer as well it's kind of an old book so if you manage to get your hands on i capture the castle by Dottie smith don't let it go i highly recommend this book i can't do anything <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Another recommendation is My Lady Jane. My Lady Jane is a retelling of Lady Jane Grey's story. England was Queen of England in real life. She was Queen of England for like what, nine days? Lady Jane Grey's story is kind of morbid in real life. Like all royal stories out there, it's not as romantic as it sounds, but this retelling, it's it's wild. <laughs> and there are elements of fantasy in it too, which I totally love. Um, it's, it's, it turns something that's actually kind of brutal, let's say, into something that's lighthearted and funny and kind of silly. It's one of those books that encourage you not to take life too seriously. <laughs> It's a silly book. I love it. And since it's a historical novel, you also see other figures of history play into the story as well. So I'll let you figure out who those people in history are. But they're kind of prominent and I love them so much. It's a silly book. My Lady Jane by these three authors that we have here. Highly recommended. <laughs> it's so hot. Very hot. Ah! Last book on our list before our battery runs out is Dash and Lily's Book of Bears. The copy that I have comes from the Strand Bookstore in New York where the story actually takes place. My cousin hooked me up with a copy. Thank you so much, Mike. You're the best. Dash and Lily's Book of Bears. Again, it's one of those books that will encourage you to just throw reality out of the window. I know anything can happen in New York, but I don't know if things in this book can happen in New York in real life. Lily, this cute, very sheltered, cute, cute kind of girl, she leaves a red moleskin notebook um, in the Strand bookstore. It's full of dares. And this guy, Dash, picks it up and I don't know, maybe he was bored, maybe he's kind of jaded because that's his character is kind of snarky snarky. So he takes on the dares. The book, like all other books in this selection, is kind of silly, kind of bordering on the nah, it won't happen in real life. But it's still funny and it still works and it can give you a solid laugh or two in there. Of course, real life New York City could be different from how it's depicted in this book, but especially during times like these, I don't think it would hurt for you to be transported to a cute, quirky, romantic New York City where things like this can happen. So that's that. Won't hurt. Won't hurt. I was thinking of adding more romance novels to this list, but I thought we could just make a different video for that. That way I could welcome you into my own personal romance novel trash can and then we can all be trash for romance novels together. Wouldn't that be nice? So that wraps up all of our lighthearted reads for this video. I hope that you like them. And if you have any more suggestions for lighthearted, fun, happy books, please don't hesitate to drop a comment below. I'd appreciate it. And the other viewers of the channel will surely appreciate it too. And yeah, 
yeah that's it for today if you can stay home please do so it will help flatten the curve faster and if you can please donate to our frontliners who are in need of ppes to so go treat them out to lunch if you can if you can donate to people who have lost their jobs or need basic basic needs like food rice what have you please do so i'll try to put some links down below for places that you can donate to during these trying times and that's it that's it you guys so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel share it to your fellow nerd friends and yeah i guess that's it please stay safe stay healthy and see you around bye so my current status is nangilay pero wala naligo there's my hinay hai drying my pang hinay hai nakaligo <laughs> ay ah uh, camera nagtungtong liha ganina here's the books here's the mic and there you can see it's my dad's garden my survival gardening naman me para maka survive sa apocalypse char and there you see the monster aloe vera my mother see looks like a monster and that is my dad's timba that he uses to water the plants that the kangkong right there see it it's t growing tall and that's that that's the thumbis tree of our neighbor hello hi mom susan how you video on your thumbis that's cute this is the gumamela. What's the English gumamela, bros? <laughs>